the Trump administration is seriously considering declaring the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization. But who is the Muslim Brotherhood and how will such a declaration affect Muslims living right here in the United States? That's next on The Real News Network. The Muslim Brotherhood it was founded in 1928 in Egypt by a school teacher and scholar Hassan Albana. It is a Sunni movement and its message is about combining political work with Islamic charity work, thereby winning the hearts and minds of a population and urge them to join Islam. Over the years, and especially with Arab Spring, the Muslim Brotherhood became a major player, especially when Egyptians elected Mohamed Morsi as Muslim Brotherhood Party president just after the Tahia Square Revolution. The U.S. is now poised to join Bahrain, Egypt, Russia, Syria, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, as countries which consider the Muslim Brotherhood a terror organization. Joining me now is Arjun Singh Sethi. He's a community activist, civil rights lawyer, author, and professor of law at Georgetown University. He is also the editor of American Hate, Survivors Speak Out. Welcome, Arjun. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Arjun, let's just start off with the very basic question. Who is the Muslim Brotherhood today? Um, well, as you pointed out, the Muslim Brotherhood was founded in Egypt in the 1920s, and it really was a cultural movement that sought to instill Muslim values into everyday life. But it has since grown, and it is now a major social and political movement that has a major presence across many countries um, in the Middle East. Um, and um, that's sort of where it stands today. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood does not have any known presence or affiliation inside the United States. And so then why does the United States want to, and it's seriously being considered in Washington at the moment, why do they want to declare it a terrorist organization at this moment in our political history? Well, the Trump administration had considered designating the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization um, really as soon as he took office, but there was a widespread popular movement against that. Um, even the CIA actually came out and said it would be a mistake because in many ways, the Muslim Brotherhood more recently has been a force of moderation and democratization in the Middle East. Um, really, the desire to um, call the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization in the United States is being pushed by the Islamophobia industry. Um, for years, um, the Islamophobia industry, um, which uh, peddles falsehoods about Islam, um, encourages violence against Islam, works with state legislatures to criminalize Muslims and Islam, has called for this designation because it's a mechanism to really criminalize Muslims and Arabs <clears throat> here in the United States. Um, for years, um, there has been this raging conspiracy theory that somehow the Muslim Brotherhood has a presence in the United States uh, and that this bogeyman is going to take over. And so if the United States designates the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization, it would really allow it to engage in a witch hunt and target a lot of Muslim and Arab activists and organizations here in the United States. And uh, give us a sense of why this has come to fruition today. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood um, is obviously very active in the Middle East. A lot of uh, countries like uh, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, uh, others, even Turkey has supported this as an organization. And uh, they are functioning uh, in these countries and they financially support this organization. So why has it suddenly become such a critical issue to declare them a terrorist organization? 
Well, again, I do think it's been a long time ask of a lot of uh, President Trump's sort of domestic Islamophobic base. Um, but I also think there is this sort of international dimension. Um, we know that the president of Egypt um, specifically asked President Trump um, to designate the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization. Uh, so has Saudi Arabia, so has Turkey. Um, and it isn't surprising that it is authoritarian regimes, um, totalitarian regimes that are making this ask. Um, because for them, it's just a mechanism to consolidate power. It's a mechanism to crush religious dissent um, and continue this broader campaign of waging war um, on a particular version of Islam, uh, but also Iran. And so in that sense, I do think that there is this domestic dimension of criminalizing Muslims and Arabs here in the United States. But there's also this international component um, that is again being uh, uh, offered and promoted uh, by these authoritarian regimes in the Middle East as a mechanism to consolidate power and crush various uh, social political movements that have actually had uh, some popularity um, with the people. These countries that support the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, like Qatar, for example, who are also allies of the United States, I mean, the uh, Middle East's largest military base of the United States is in Qatar. Um, how do you explain that relationship? Because, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Qatar is an important ally of the United States. I mean, you know, it's hard to say, and I do think that in the Middle East we've seen shifting alliances. I think one of the strongest alliances in the Middle East today is actually the alliance between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Um, and so these alliances shift, and I think Qatar is a country um, that for the most part often um, is defined um, by its relationship to other states. And so it's not clear to me how much ultimately agency they have, um, but I do fundamentally believe um, that this is really just a mechanism to criminalize uh, Muslims in the United States and to criminalize uh, different forms of Islamic expression um, really across the world. And even, you know, I, I would also point out that two different U.S. administrations specifically looked into the question of the Muslim Brotherhood and found that this is not an organization that supports terrorism the Obama administration and the Bush administration. Um, as recently, I believe, as 2014 or 15, the UK looked into this as well and also decided against um, calling the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization. And so the Trump administration would really be breaking um, with uh, decades of US law um, and even uh, uh, um, you know practices and, and, and procedures that have been followed by our allies. So then how do you explain uh, countries like Russia, um, uh, UAE, uh, the whole list of people I mentioned off the top, uh, declaring it a terrorist organization? Well, I mean, if you think about Russia, right? I mean, Russia has waged war on their domestic Muslim population. Um, we've seen really since the Arab uprisings uh, in Tahrir Square, um, that any form of, of political opposition, whether it's secular um, or whether it's religious, um, in many ways has been crushed by these states. Um, and so I really do think that part of what's going on here is that these countries are really trying to consolidate power. Um, they see the Muslim Brotherhood as a threat. They see the Muslim Brotherhood in some ways as an organic movement um, that in some cases is actually galvanizing, um, um, you know, uh, popular support. And there's no better way um, to chill that movement, to crush that movement, uh, than be part of an international campaign to criminalize the movement and to criminalize anyone who supports it. All right, Arjun, we'll leave it there for now. There's so much more to discuss, and we are hoping to have you back at some point. Uh, thanks for joining us, Arjun. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.